by the grace of God. But we're going to do this from starting tomorrow to the 29th of January. Amen. Praise God. Any questions? So those, um, anyone else, like I said, I got a few of these suggestions um, on the table back there. If you want to take them, pick up a few and share it with others or with that are not here. That might be interesting, whatever. One of the greatest battles we have as a Christian, one of so many battles that we have as a Christian is the flesh. Look at your neighbors at the flesh. If we can get this flesh under control and get it to be become subjection to become obedient to the spirit, man, we can accomplish a lot. Because this flesh is always trying to dictate to you what to do, how to do it, when to do it. And, and the more you give in to it, the more it's going to dominate your life. So let us be more spiritually minded than we are fleshly minded by the grace of God. Amen. This is the year of abundance. Look at your neighbor and say, this is the year of abundance for me. Amen. Last week I shared with you about the um, how about how to receive and experience the abundant life. Everybody remember that? I gave you three points. Point number one was set your mind on things above. Point number two was to speak those things which are above. Um no, I'm sorry. Think about those things above. And point number three was to speak those things which are above. Amen. So those are some of the things that can get us jump started into year of 2023. It's moving already. Do you believe it? I mean, we're already here almost the ninth day already into 2000 and, um, 2023 by the grace of God. It's going to be a good year. It's going to be a good year for me by the grace of God. Amen. Start believing it. Start speaking it. And start looking for it by the grace of God. Um, if you want to experience something different, what you got to do? You got to do something different. So God is good. Amen. By the grace of God. So we're just so thankful for what, 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 what God is doing for us and, and the great things he's doing and what he's doing in my life. And it's, I tell you, God is just amazing. You got your Bibles this morning. Turn with us to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 28, chapter 18, and verse 18, uh, 28 through 30. Luke chapter 18, verses 28 through 30. Many times, you know, people don't serve God because of various reasons. And a lot of times, I love stand for the reading of God's word. And many times, people don't serve God because or what they're going to lose or, or give up. I think they're going to lose or what they're going to lose for following Christ. But I got news for you this morning. We want to speak to you about a subject this morning about you will not regret it. Look at your neighbor and say you will not regret it. Not Only thing I dis um, regret about serving God, I didn't do it when I was five or six years old. Well, other than that, there was no regrets from serving Christ. In the book of um, in the book of Luke, in the Message Bible, it says this: Peter tried to gain some initiative. So we have left everything. Look at your neighbor. Say everything. We own and follow you, didn't we? And Jesus said, "Yes, you did." He didn't know what, people said, what Peter said. And, and said Jesus in the message Bible, he said, you won't regret it. Look at your neighbor and say, you won't regret it. Jesus told Peter, he will what? You won't regret what, what you've done. Even though what you've done, you think you've done a great deal, but you won't regret what you've done. He said, no one who has sacrificed home, spouse, brothers, sisters, parents, and children and whatever will, will lose out. It will what? It's what going to go, it's going to do what? It's all going to come back. It's going to, one scripture said multiply. That's more than what you've given up. Amen. 
Father, let us pray and we thank you as we pray together this morning. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Holy Spirit, speak today. Speak to us and through us in Jesus' name. We can't do anything except you be with us. And we pray now, God, that your word will not return into your void. It will accomplish and prosper in the place and where to you see it, where to you send it in Jesus' name. We thank you for this right now. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You know, this is a trick of the devil trying to make you think or trying to make you look at what you're giving up when serving Christ. A lot of people under the impression say, well, if I give up my lifestyle, I can't drink no more. Which is, which is well, once you begin to read God's word, begin to understand what it do to you, all the stuff you're doing is what it does to you. You don't want, you won't want to do it anyway. But the devil seemed like he tried to make you seem like that is so paramount in your life. Those things are important. Well, I can't do this. I can't do that. And sometimes religion have made us, have came down quite rigid on people as well. You can't do this. You can't do this, whatever. God have created things for our enjoyment. Amen. But at the same time, he don't want us to put those things before him. You can pretty much have most of the stuff you're dealing with in life, but at the same time, one of the things you realize, a lot of stuff that you're doing, you don't want to do anymore because it's not beneficial. It's not beneficial to you. You know, I, I drank just like most people drink. I danced like oh, most other people did. I stayed out like most other people stayed out. But once I began to realize in Christ what it was doing to my body, and what it was doing to me instead of what it was doing for me, I decided to give it up. Look at your neighbors, give it up. And guess what? I have not regretted it. Not one bit I've regretted it. Because in the morning, I don't have to worry about them hangovers. Number two, if I get caught driving down the road at night, I don't have to worry about DWI getting caught pulling over and failing the sobriety test. I don't have to worry about that. But because of God's grace and his mercy, he, he's good. You don't give up. When you give up anything for God, God is the God of restoration. Look at your neighbors of restoration. God wants to restore things to you by the grace of God. He wants to restore. Let me get a mic, if you will. Hand mic. God is the type of God that is able to restore. And he will restore if you allow him to. I have not given Matthew 19, 27. Peter said to him, we have given up everything. Everything. What will we get? What will we get? Do we get it? Let me tell you something. God, when you give up something for God, you always get more than you gave up. He's the God of multiplication and addition. He don't just... And, you know, just like when you give your money, give your time or whatever. And then over there in the book of, it's not on the overhead. I didn't give it to Daphne in the scripture. But in the book of Hebrews, Hebrew, for those of you taking note, go to Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. God don't forget your labor love. People say, well, you know, I don't have, I, I'm not going to get anything going without being an usher. I'm not getting anything from doing this for, the, for God. But let me tell you something. You, God always rewards you for what you do. Always rewards you. God is reward of those that diligently seek him. He said, for God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him. He won't forget it. And how you've showed your love toward others. He won't forget it. And so even though you may forget it, but everything you do for God, you will be rewarded for by the grace of God. This should be an encouragement to people to want to do more for God, really. 
People look at it like I was telling the brothers this morning. People look at being an usher. That's beneath them. Cleaning bathroom in the church. That's beneath them. All those things are beneath them. Unless they're standing from the pulpit speaking or whatever, everything else beneath them. I don't need to be in the choir. I don't need to do this. I don't need to do this. All these things really that, that's, that's in the church that can be done, people can volunteer to do. People don't want to do it because it's not, not what they want to do because it's not in the front. But everything you do, everything you do for God is rewarded. God rewards you for it by the grace of God. And Peter, and God wanted Peter to understand, said, Peter, there's two worlds. That's this present world you live in right now. There's also a world to come, eternal world, eternal life. And many times people are so caught up in this world, they're forgetting about there's a life after this life. Do you believe and realize you're going to live longer and eternally than you are doing now in the physical life? Your eternal life is much longer than your physical life. That's eternal. Look at your neighbors say eternal. Eternal is never ending. It's continuing. It never stops. It goes on and on and on by the grace of God. And then over there in, in the easy to read version, I like this version here too, um, Matthew 19, 29. Jesus said, everyone who has left houses, brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, and children, a farm to follow me, will get much more, much more than they left. I mean, that's an incentive right there to want to follow Christ. And I'm telling you, God is just so good to us. He's good. He's, he's the God of restoration. And, he's, and as always, God has a great return plan on everything we give him by the grace of God. Just like even, even when our finances, he got the greatest return rate on our money that we can imagine by the grace of God. If you want more, give more. Do more by the grace of God. I'm telling you, and, and you will not regret it. Now, some people will, will look at that and say, well, try to take advantage of you. If they try to take advantage of you, that's not God. But God loves you, and he will not allow you to be taken advantage of. And that's why we must learn to let go and let God. What do you mean by saying let go and let God? Learn how to surrender. Surrender things to God so God can do what he wants to do in our life. Now hold on to him. Don't be a hoarder. To learn to let go by the grace of God. And, and all the stuff you lost, he can restore. And when you look at the word restore, it means to return, to bring back, to make better than make brand new. He never give you back what you've given up. It's always better by the grace of God. And, and that's a good thing about God. You don't get back what you give. You always get back more than what you give because the return is so much greater. And so and that's why it's so important. Look, whenever God asks you to give up something, give up some time or whatever the situation may be, people are very selfish with their time, very selfish. They, can, they have time to do everything they want to do except serve God. But when it comes to serving God, I ain't have no time. Think about we can work 40 hours a week, 40 hours a week, hard work, some of us. Some of us just show up for a paycheck. I know you don't know anybody like that, okay? But some people show up for a paycheck. But work 40 hours a week. And then on a Sunday, unfortunately, many cannot even give God just one hour, one hour at a time just to come and pray and seek him to learn something about him, learn more about him than they already know. If you seek what you're going to do, you're going to find. God going to help you to find something that you didn't have before you came. And that's why the scripture said in the book of Proverbs, um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, trust in the Lord. And lean not to your own understanding. Don't try to figure it out how it's going to happen. Let him do that. Learn how to give it to him, let go, and let God do what he needs to do so he can be able to change things in your life. So many people today are 
It's just like a sterner wheel. We got so much pride, so much pride, and we worry about everything. We, worry, we, we wake up worrying about things we shouldn't even worry about. Doubt things or whatever, what God want to do. Um, this afternoon, Hill and I have been invited to have a, a Zoom um, with, this, uh, with a particular church to talk about prayer um, by the grace of God. They want to learn more about prayer. But the thing about prayer and anything else, it's all about your relationship with God. First John 5, 14 lays out the foundation, I believe, for me. It said, this is the confidence we have in him. What is the confidence? We ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Is that right? If you abide in me, my words abide in you, you can ask for what you will, it'll be done. All those scriptures are conditional. Look at your name say conditional. This is the confidence. If you have no confidence in God, you're not sure he hear you or not hear you, but he, your prayer may not get answered. This is the confidence we have. This is the trust. This is the liability. This is the dependency we have in him. That God, when I call, Jeremiah 33 and 3 said what? If I call unto him, he will answer me and show me great and mighty thing that I know is not. But if I don't have that, how you build confidence in him? By spending time with him, getting to know him, be fellowship with him. It's not like going, going to the table, eat your meal, and once you eat your meal, you go about your business, forget about it, and wait till the next meal. You spend time with God. You talk to him. So you get to know him. So when the devil come to you and say, well, God won't do this and God won't do that, you don't, have to, you don't have to reason with him. You can say, no, this is what the words say. What the words say. What the words say over there in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 30, 30 and 15, when you're going through some stuff. See, when you know what the words say, you got something to stand on. You got something you can combat with him with. Talk to him and say, no, that's not what God said by the grace of God. And when you know what the words say, guess what? God can do it. And he will do it. And I'm telling you, God is an amazing, an amazing God. Definitely, I might have that scripture. It's Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 17. I said 7. Um, it should be verse 17, 30 and 17. I'm sorry. Gave you the wrong scripture. But that's why it's so important is to let go and let go. Because I'm telling you, the enemy will wear you out with worrying if you don't know how to trust God. When you encounter a situation, encounter problems, going through different stuff, he will wear you down with negative thoughts. And if you know, have no words. You have nothing to depend on, nothing you can call on. You find yourself accepting what he said. Just like when the doctor come in there and they say verse things to you. If you have no word to what God said and what the words say, you got nothing to believe but to trust in what the doctor say. Now, I'm not saying that they're bad people, but you need to know the word because God's word has to finally say so in every situation by the grace of God. Too many of us are relying on people, relying on faith, relying on mankind for our source, for our, for our source. But we got to remember, like I said earlier during testimony, man is your resource, God is your source. Learn to trust God for what you're dealing with by the grace of God. When you know the word, you can stand. Heaven and earth will pass away will always stand by the grace of God. And many times we don't live a good life, not because we can't, it's because we don't know God. And the devil wants you to stay with where you are. He wants you to continue to hang out with losers because he knows for a fact you're going to become a loser. 
Blind, even, even Matthew said what? Blind leads to blind. And when, what happened? Blind leads to blind. They're all going to end up where? In the ditch. You need to come out to those and hang out with those that are walking in the light. Become a friend to those in the light. Some of the stuff that they have learned can rub off on you. Iron, you don't find a piece of wood and sharpen iron with. Sharpen this iron. Show that another man is sharpen another man's confidence. So it's all about what you want. You do what God said do and do it the way God said do it. You will not regret it. I'm telling you. You won't regret it. You'll look back and say, Lord, I thank you because I heard you, I believe you, and I thank you for what you've done for me by the grace of God. Thank you for it. Amen. And just like God has not created plans for you to fail. God created plans for you to be successful. Look at look what he did in the book of um Jeremiah, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Even the children of Israel was in exile during this particular time. And God said, Guess what? I know the plans. What? I know the plans and the thoughts that I have for you. They were going through some rough times. And many times, people go through rough times. Tough times don't last, but tough people do, by the grace of God. Tribulation is going to come, but when they come, you can overcome them. Jesus said, in this world, you will have some tribulations. You're going to have some trouble, but, but, but what? Be of good courage. I have overcome the world, by the grace of God. See, you have to know that. That has to be in your spirit. That has to resonate when that devil knock on your door. When you get that text message saying trouble is coming, trouble is this, this is happening, that is happening. And the first thing he wants you to do is throw up both hands and say, well, it's over now. What's next, devil? He's a liar and the truth is not in him. That's why Jesus said, I've come that you might have life. And have it more abundantly. Even in the midst of your trouble, you still can be blessed. You still can walk out being more than a conqueror, not just a conqueror. We believe and trust God for being, for giving us the strength to be more than a conqueror by the grace of God. We always, not sometimes, he always causes us to triumph, to be victorious. Always, not sometimes. Always. Look at your neighbor. Always. That's why when you look at yourself in the mirror in the morning, the first words that come out your mouth, by the grace of God, I'm looking at a winner, not a loser. I always win by the grace of God. I'm always a winner. Always will be a winner. If I'm losing, I just haven't learned how to win. As long as you, if you stay in God's word, he'll teach you how to win. But even in, in the midst of all the trouble that, that the children of Israel were going through, God said, guess what? I know the plans and the thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster and to give you a future and a hope by the grace of God. Somebody need to hear that this morning. Because somebody don't believe that they got, that they can have a future. They can have a good future, not just a future in the past. And stop talking about what had happened in the past. Stop thinking of those negative thoughts. As old Kenneth Hagin said, the devil can fly over your head, but you don't have a lamb nest there. Thoughts can come. But guess what? You don't have to let those thoughts become a part of your life and start to begin to act upon those thoughts. And I'm telling you, he'll lay back and wait and lay dormant until trouble come. When trouble come, let a pain in your body come. He tell you, man, that's cancer. Got a pain in your chest, that's a heart attack. You're getting ready to die. And if you believe that crazy stuff, guess what? You end up having a heart attack. And that's why the scripture said, so as a man thinketh in his heart, 
so is he. That's why you don't think them negative thoughts. Think those things which are good. Think those things which are above of good report by the grace of God. And just because it happened to them and just because they say it's going to happen, that does not mean it's going to happen. The seeds are seeds are word. It's being put in the air for you to believe it or to accept it. But you look at you, you say, you know what? I discredit this. I don't receive this in Jesus' name. You get a negative report about something. I don't receive this in Jesus' name. This is the word of God. I thank you. You speak it out loud. This is what the words say. And you speak what the words say, not what you not something that contradicts the word. You got a choice to make. And learn to let go and let God. And to put things in God's hand. And tell yourself, guess what? I'm putting things, I'm putting it in God's hand. When you put it in God's hand, place it in God's hand. But when you do something like that, guess what's gonna happen? The enemy will turn right around and try to stop the process of what God is trying to do, trying to hinder what God is trying to do to get you back involved in the picture. And now I'm trying to get you to think about what you're going to do. You put it in his hand, then you take it out of his hand by thinking about what you're going to do. He started saying, well, if you believe in God for finances, well, it haven't came yet. Well, I guess I'll go to the loan. You're already in debt. You can't get out of debt, get in debt, getting out of debt. You had to make a decision at some point to trust God. And the moment you, the things that you've trusted God for don't come through, the enemy said, guess what? This is what you can do. Now you're taking, a few days ago you prayed and asked God to bless you with it, to do it for you. Now, because you haven't seen the results, now you say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. If you're going to trust God, do what? Trust God. Don't trust God. Say you're trusting God. You know you're not trusting God. But you know what? God is smart enough to know the difference. He's no fool. We can't fool him. A lot of people think they can fool him, but we can't. He know the difference. But this is why God can restore and get you out of everything that you're dealing with if you allow him to. But you got to trust him. got to trust him by the grace of God. And the thing about life is this. Learn how to let things go. Look at your neighbors and let things go. Stop being a hoarder. Stop being a hoarder. Let it go. Everything, think about it, think about it. Everything that you've decided, you have decided to let go, it wasn't years. It wasn't perhaps even months. God replaced it with something better. Is that right? Because he's a God of restoration. He knows how to restore. And that's what he was telling Peter. Peter said, Lord, we left everything. We ain't got nothing now, Lord, to follow you. God is not broke. <laughs> you can trust God. You don't have to worry about his financial institution being robbed. No, that will never happen. And that's what God had to teach Peter. He said, Peter, look, you haven't left off. Yes, you think in the natural you have, but guess what? I'm going to give back to you. Everything you left and then some. And then some. Look at your neighbor and then some. By the grace of God. That's why the scripture said, guess what? In 2023, you want to let God do a new thing. In the book of, book of um, Isaiah, Isaiah 43, 18. God said, I want to do a new thing for you. Whatever you want back, Give more of it. Amen. You want people to help you? Help other people. You want to be want people to bless you? 
bless other people. You want people to love you? Stop being a jerk and start loving other people. Stop being so stuck up. Walking around like, like a pole, like a telephone pole. All stuck up. Be more friendly. Put a smile on your face. Start walking around looking like you're sucking on a lemon. When you go in the store and can't find something, you find out you get more help. It's amazing the things that we do and call it God, really. I'm telling you, God has placed favor upon you. The favor of God is upon you. So the only thing you have to do is show up and walk in love. You can get what you want by the grace of God. Then you listen to God. If you're not sure about that situation, if you're used to listening to God, praying to God, talking to God, God will tell you the outcome before you, before it began. Because he does know the end before the beginning, doesn't he? He sure does. Sure he does. That's why he can tell you certain things, because he already knows the outcome. But what we try to figure out, we try to figure out what he, what he knows. Stop trying to figure God out what he knows and just do what he tells you to do. If you do that, guess what? All is well. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 43, and verse 18 through 19, do not remember the former things or ponder on the things of the past. Just because God did it away yesterday don't mean he's going to do the same way today. He got a new strategy for today. And just because it didn't work for them, that does not mean it's not going to work for you. If you do what they're doing, act the way they're acting, live in the way they're living, you'll get what they got. If you want to experience something different, you got to do something different by the grace of God. Do what God say do. And when you do it, you do it in love and do it as unto the Lord, not as unto people. Whatever you do. If you do it that way, I'm telling you, God will always bless you. You always get what you want, more than you want by the grace of God. Then he said, listen carefully. I am uh, I'm about to do what? A new thing. A new thing. God won't do some new things for you. But by the grace of God, guess what? Let us listen to what he's telling us to do. And I know sometimes it's challenging, brothers and sisters. Listen to me. I know it's challenging. But I'm telling you, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Trust and obey. And if you do what he tells you to do, you won't regret it. You won't regret it. I'm telling you. You look back and say, wow. Man, I should have done that years ago. Look what jo- um, Joel 2.25, very familiar passage of Scripture. He said, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, eaten, and the canker worms, and the caterpillars, and the palmer worms, my great army which I have sent among you. God said he will restore what? All the years, all the stuff that's been gone. So, that means if you've dealing, been, been dealing with an illness, something that's been going on for years, can it be restored? Yes, it can. The scripture said in the book of, Matt, in the book of Mark, Mark 9, 20, Mark 9, 11, I believe it is, or 9, 23, that all things are possible to them that believe it. All things are possible. Just because it's been that way for years, listen to me. It can be reversed. Well, you know, the doctor said this. The doctor is not Jesus. That's what he said. God can restore everything, just like a lot of people today. You know, their legs, their arms, their eyes, their backs. 
all types of these body parts. Like the man that had the willing arm with the hand. God re reached out to him to reach out your hand. And God restored. And like I said, when you think about being, being restored, you're not getting back what you got, what you gave. You're always going to get back more than what you gave, better than what you gave. So when he restores something, it's always better. Always better. Just like he did Job. When Job lost everything he had, he got back more than what he lost. Well, you got arthritis. No, you don't. You just need to trust God and start speaking. If you don't have it, and trust God, that if you do have it, that you no longer have it. He can restore you. Whatever you're dealing with. And I'm telling you, just like a few months ago, I couldn't even walk. He restored me. I'm not where I want to be, but guess what? I'm getting better every day. Because the work that he has begun in, within me, he, gonna, he is faithful to bring it to completion by the grace of God. So it's just not a matter how, just a matter when. Man, I was so sick, I couldn't hardly move. Every bone in my body hurt. Hurting all over. There was nothing on my face. My eyes were hurting. Everything hurting on me in my body. When I lied down in bed at night, I was just in tremendous pain. And the sad thing about it, I couldn't take pain medicine because I didn't know how it would interfere with some of the stuff I was taking at the time from the doctor. The only person I had to talk to was Jesus. And that was Dr. Jesus. Me to get to sleep. Move this pain. I got down to 139 pounds. Can you imagine that? 100, 130, 139 pounds and still losing weight. Are you listening to me? And God has pretty much restored me back to where I want to be. I can get back to 200, but in Jesus' name, we ain't going back there. Not good grandma, but I ain't going back there. Now, them 36 pants, I ain't wearing them no more. Not good grandma. I know grandma teacher but say he ain't got good grandma. That's okay. But you got the message. I ain't doing that no more. Because I'm pushing back. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm pushing back. That one time I had no appetite. Look at your neighbor and say, no appetite. Now I'm on a seafood diet. Eat everything I see. And the very thing I don't want, the enemy is trying to make happen. I say, you're a liar from the pits of hell. It ain't going to happen. No, in Jesus' name. And that's why you got to be adamant about it. And when you stand, God will stand with you. Whatever decision you make, he'll... He'll support their decision. Again, what the scripture say? According to his will, according to his word, he hears us by the grace of God. And that's why it's important. Like the scripture said in the book of Jeremiah, he said, I will restore on I will restore health unto thee. How many people today attend church don't know that scripture? I look at that scripture and read it. And will not apply. It's not going to help you if you don't apply what you read. You got to get it in your heart, not just in the head. I just know it. Some people can quote scripture from Genesis to Revelation, but it's not working for them. Why? Because it's in the head and not in the heart. You want to get what's in your head to start working from your heart, putting it out from, from, from thinking about it into practical application by the grace of God. There's a lot of people pass away every day knowing God is a healer. Knowing God can heal. But guess what? They pass away every day. Because what they know is in the head and not in the heart. We got to get in our heart to know that you know that you know. And how you start doing that 
by learning how to be obedient to what God. If you're obedient in the little things, God will help you when you get into the big things to be faithful. Everything that's big start off small. People say, how can I trust God? Well, guess what? Can you trust him for, can you trust him for a dime? You can't trust him for a dime if you can get $1,000. But people think that you know you like a job. Well, I want to be the boss. You don't know how to talk to people. How can you be the boss? You got to learn at the bottom and work your way to the top. Everything that's, that's small, that's big, starting off as small. I want to be in charge. Really? You have no discipline yourself. You can't lead yourself out of the bathroom. You want to be in charge, though. We tell you to be at 9 o'clock. You think 9 o'clock tomorrow. We said 9 o'clock today. But people say, well, you know, it don't matter. It does matter. What you say is what you should do. If you don't believe what you say, why do you think others are going to believe what you say? That's why it's so important to start learning to believe what you say. Jesus said, pray to the mountain. He said, speak to the mountain. Speak the word to the mountain. If you speak to the mountain, it will be done. Mountain symbolic represents some big. And as we get older, the devil likes to try to play with our minds and say, well, you got all times. You got this. You got that. No, if you accept it, you got it. But you speak to your mind. Say, my mind is my mind. And I have the mind of Christ. There's no sickness in heaven, and there's no sickness going to be in my body on earth in Jesus' name. And if it is, it got to go. There's no room in the end for you. You got to go. You're rejected by the grace of God. You don't wait until the symptoms start happening. You start speaking to your body now. And people say, well, I'm going to wait to retire. You don't know if you're going to retire or not. You hope you're going to retire. You need to be concerned about today versus being concerned about tomorrow. Because tomorrow we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. That's why it's so important is to know God today. Mark 11, 9, 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. All things are possible. I mean, people read these words, I'm telling you. We say all things, all things. I don't care what it is. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't care what it is. I don't care how long it's been. All things are possible to them that believe it. All things are possible. You don't have to accept it. You can reject it. And if you have been accepting it, you can reject it by the grace of God. And start speaking the word against it by the grace of God. Call those things as not as though they were. Speak it. You'll no longer be in this condition. This is what's going to happen in my life. This is the direction my life is going. I'm no longer going to be codependent. I'm no longer going to be from paycheck to paycheck. I will have more than enough. Because I am living in the overflow. And he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask, think, or imagine according to the power that works within us. It's the power of God that works within us. If we can get this stuff to resonate in our heart, let me tell you something. We'll be a force to be reckoned with by the grace of God. But guess what? We got to get in our heart. Got to get it in our heart. And that's why we have to learn how to let things go and let go. Isn't it amazing? We're in the wintertime. I'm not sure you ever paid attention to this or not. 
But let me bring some of your attention. Look at the trees outside. Most of the trees right now don't have any leaves. Is that right? They go on dormant. What they did during the fall of the year, during the fall of the year, they learned how to what? To let things go. And that's what we need to do. Learn how to let things go. Because the season is going to come they're going to be productive. Them tree, bearless trees right now will be full of leaves in a few months. Springtime. And everything you're dealing with right now is only but a few minutes. It ain't forever. It's going to change. So let us learn how to let things go, all our worrying and frustration all the negativity and whatever and stuff like that, guess what? It's not going to change a thing. Let it go. And learn how to let God do what he wants to do. He'll do it. I'm telling you, he'll do it. And when he do it, you'll look back and say, God, wow. I knew you could do it, but I didn't think you would do it like that. By the grace of God, guess what? He'll do it. He'll let it go. Then we're in the book of Matthew, Matthew 12, 13. We're getting, working to a close by the grace of God. He told the man that had the will in hand. He said, reach out. And Jesus restored his hand. God can restore. And he will restore. Everything you've lost, he will he loves you by the grace of God. And that's why it's important for us to get restored. Many people today, some even maybe by listening by TV or listening by Facebook, they need to be restored spiritually by the grace of God. They need to be restored. Men are weak, and they need to be restored. If you're holding on to some stuff, dealing with some stuff, uh, by not letting it go, holding grudges and stuff like that. The devil wants you to stay in that mode because the only person that's losing out here is you. You need to be spiritually restored by the grace of God. You need to be restored. And let God come into your life and change you so you can enjoy. Think about how you're being blessed right now by the lifestyle you're living, by the little things you are doing for Christ. What what would happen if you let go your life and let God change you to become what he wants you to be? I wonder how much more would you have? I wonder how much more peace and joy would you have? How and satisfied would you, when you look in the mirror, you won't look at yourself being disgusted and being discouraged. I wonder how life will be for you. How good life will be for you if you let go and just let God. In the book of um book of um Deuteronomy, last scripture. No, I did say I said more two more scripture. Um um Job twenty two forty two forty, we touched that a little bit about God restoring his restoring the wealth unto Job. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter chapter thirty in the message Bible. God is just a good God. He's a great God. And here's Moses talking to the children of Israel. Israel. Here's what would happen. While you was out among the nations where God has dispersed you, and the blessing and the curses come in just the, just that way. The same way God said the blessings and the cursing would come, will come came then, they still come the same way today. God don't change. And he goes on to tell him, he goes on to tell him later down in the verse, he tells him, look, he will restore. If they be obedient and listen to him and obey him, he will restore everything basically they lost. Isn't that amazing? 
God said, in the message Bible said, God, your God, will restore everything you've lost. Look at your name and say, everything I've lost. Think about it. I don't know about you, but I lost a lot of stuff. And guess what? I want it all back. Can I get it back? He said you can. And he tell them how to do it. He said, I have set them before you, and you and your children, take them serious. Take what? Talking about his word. Take them seriously and come back to God, your God, and obey him with your whole heart and soul according to everything I commanded you this day. And God, then he said, God, your God, will restore everything. People don't think about being obedient to God. I do what I want to do. You can do what you want to do, live the way you want to live, but you do it at a price, at your own expense. You don't realize how much you're missing out when you don't obey God. And I thank God for what he's doing. God is telling him, said, look, just the way the promises, just the way I say the curses will come, the same way the blessing will come if you if you obey me. I tell you, obedience is better than sacrifice by the grace of God. And that's why I can say today, 2023, that we serve God faithfully and do what he wants us to do. I don't mean out of religious duty. Do what you do because you love God. If you do it from your heart, you will not regret it. I'm telling you, you won't regret it. When you give unto the Lord, whatever you give, your time, effort, and whatever, and and I tell you, um, I spend a lot of time doing things and helping other people. But you know what? When I get ready for things, when I need to do things, guess what? He always gives me plenty of time to do things for myself. Lay upon other people's heart to help me. He always gives me back just as much as I give him and then some. That's why I don't mind. And I know sometimes people say, well, I just don't have the time. You just don't have the You just cannot really deny yourself from those blessings like that. Because you give up. That's what Peter said. Peter said, what? We left everything. And Peter and God went off to went on to name off the things that people had given up. And he promised them, if you follow me, you won't regret it. Because I'm going to multiply everything that you've given up. What a great return. You can't beat that return by the grace of God. So my people say, well, I'm going I'm to give, give God a dime of my money. Well, guess what? You don't have to give it to God. Go ahead and give it to the doctors if you choose to. But I'm telling you, give it to God and let him multiply. Give your life to God if you haven't done that. And I encourage those that are listening this morning, if you want to start this year off right, start off right. Start off serving and honoring God this year so you can experience that abundant life by the grace of God. He wants you to have it, but every promise God has given us and made to us, if you read it, there's always a condition. It's conditional. We read the promise, but we don't think about the condition. What is my part in this? I want a good life, but what are you doing to have a good life? How am I living to have a good life? Lord, I want more. I want to be debt free. What are you doing with your money now to get out of debt? Many times we're so indoctrinated with things. We got more things than we can really know what to do with, really. And every time you come out, you buy something new, they come out with something else new. Look at the phones. Who would have thought a cell phone be almost three or four thousand dollars. 
You cannot imagine. But guess what? People would spend that type of money on a cell phone. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. That's your money. You do as you want it with it. But I'm telling you, you don't want to continue to keep putting money into black holes with no return. Give your stuff to God. Give your finances. Give yourself to God. If God can get into your heart, he can get into your wallet. God is good. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for the great things you're doing for us. And, Father, I praise you right now for this year. We will experience your abundance for us this year. In Jesus' name. Not only for us, but we declare and decree for our families and friends as well. They will experience that abundant life that you talk about in John 10.10, even in the book of Psalms. Psalm 65, 11. Father, we thank you for that right now. We praise you and we honor you and we bless you. If you're here this morning, looking at your life, some things that you've done last year, let last year be last year. Forget about it. Think about it now. All the opportunities that, that are set before you, everything that you're dealing with, good, bad, and different, that you think bad, you think that it's, you shouldn't be dealing with, Look at, look at it as an opportunity to serve God. If you look at it as an opportunity to serve God, you will not begrudge that opportunity as much as you're doing now. Because just remember, it's only about a few minutes you're going to deal with it. And then it's going to be over. But during those few minutes, you want to make sure that you do it with the right attitude by the grace of God. Amen? Do it to honor God. Father, we thank you so much for your word today. We praise you, and we give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We thank you for this day, and we just honor you, Father. And, Lord, we can truly say this morning, we can look back over our life, all the great things we've been through, we've gone through, and even going through right now. We can truly say, Father, we don't regret it because, for a simple fact, you're always with us. You're always with us and always will be with us. We praise you and we honor you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.